All right, it's time for something a little bit different. This is The Magister. It uh, describes itself as a procedurally generated murder mystery, and really that's exactly what it is. It is a game involving some deck building aspects, some investigative aspects, some uh, choose your own adventure aspects, and really the whole thing is based around this idea that a murder has happened in this village, you are a magister sent to investigate, and you have 15 days to figure out what has actually happened. And this is really, really cool because it does a lot of things differently. So the first thing you're going to be seeing in the background right now is some combat. There is combat involved in the game, although it is not necessarily the main aspect. In fact, I wouldn't really say the game has a main aspect as much as it has a bunch of different aspects that all tie together to create a sort of tabletop game-like experience. If you've played investigative tabletop games with like some light combat and some deduction and all that, something like, say, Arkham Horror, that kind of thing, then you'll probably be familiar with the general idea, the sort of overall shape that this game is going to take. Now, I did mention procedurally generated, and that's uh, one of the more interesting aspects. The overall world, the village and the people in it and everything, are the same every time, although their names do differ. But the way that the game uses its generation is all in the investigation itself. So every time you start a new game, the overall murder, it changes. You know, uh, who did it? why they did it, how they did it, all that stuff is different every time, so the investigation is going to have to take various different routes to figure out everything that happened. Uh, this generation, by the way, also applies to you, your character, the Magister. You actually have a choice between three Magisters every new game. There are three specializations that are kind of like skill trees, or skill grids, they're represented as large squares, and each specialization unlocks a further grid of nine individual skills behind it. So you could say that there are 18 skills in the game, although kind of there are 21 since each specialization also unlocks some stuff. And overall, each Magister will have one of those specializations unlocked. So you can pick a brawny one, a smart one, or a tricky one, basically. And also, each Magister will have a negative trait of some kind. They'll have some sort of affliction. They could be an alcoholic, they could be... Uh, a sort of very pious person that needs to go to a temple every day. Uh, the very first time I played, my Magister hallucinated, which is sort of fascinating because it, these afflictions affect multiple parts of the game. They affect the combat because they will have some sort of either cards added to your deck that are not so great unless you remove them somehow, or in the case of someone who hallucinates, uh, one of the monsters on the field will actually not be real, and you won't know until either they try to attack you or you attack them, which is kind of fascinating. You also have a different dialogue with different people depending on your affliction, which is a nice touch. So for instance, every time I spoke to one of the major uh, villagers, it said that there was like a weird creature around them or like a sleeping camel on their head or a pink dragon floating over their shoulders, stuff like that that I was just seeing in my head, which is also a really neat little touch. And uh, yeah, so the afflictions do very much alter how you see the world and how the world sees you. They aren't just like a card added to your deck or anything. They have a couple of other aspects to them as well. And in fact, there actually is a courtesan. She is an intellectual courtesan, by the way, not the uh, standard kind. She's basically a psychologist and uh, you can pay her to help you figure out all these demons in your head and uh, eventually sort of cure yourself of this affliction, although it is a little bit expensive. But one really interesting aspect of this is that uh, Sometimes when you go to sleep, you will actually find yourself in a city filled with these sort of skeletal creatures that have to fight you, and those are your actual inner demons, and you have to fight them off. And at first, this combat will be just about impossible because they do a lot of damage, and there are several of them, which is sort of to help you represent that your demons are sort of taking you over and that you can't fight against them right now. But as you go through your appointments, you could say with the courtesan, she'll actually show up in these internal encounters and help you fight, which I thought was a really, really cool sort of gameplay and story integration. You know, it's a nice way to integrate the fact that your character is getting healthier, is overcoming these problems in their head in a, a gameplay way. It's actually really a neat way to do it. Every villager has a three-star relationship rating as you talk to them, do quests for them, uh, give them money, <laughs> it depends on exactly who it is, this relationship will improve. And at three stars, you can interrogate them about what they were doing on the night of the murder. And you can gather various clues and bits of leads and things from stuff you can find, people you can talk to, uh, journal entries you can read, all sorts of different ways. And uh, these can be used to actually question the motives of the people that you're interrogating. So for instance, when you first encounter a person, you can gain one experience by just looking them over. And uh, this will put them in your journal as just a sort of physical description, like are they strong, are they wealthy, do they have any sort of specific physical trait that may be useful in the case, that kind of thing. 
and then you can get a clue that says maybe, for instance, the graveyard was closed at night. So if someone tells you, I, uh, I went to the graveyard at night, so I couldn't have been at the murder scene because I was there mourning a lost family member, you can actually show them that clue and be like, uh, no, you weren't. And then you'll actually get some experience and they'll tell you about, you know, what really happened and things like that. You can actually gather all these clues and use any one of them that you want to actually question people and the stories that they tell you once you get them to max relationship. And uh, it's a very open-ended investigation system that just allows you to go around, find stuff, and then use it to just deduce. You know, it doesn't really point you exactly to where to go or to what to do. You just have to use your brain and then listen to people's conversations and figure out if you think they're lying or not and if you should question them and using what evidence. There are loads of different side quests and things that you can do, and a lot of these aren't... Uh exactly side quests per se because although they are not necessarily directly related to the murder that you're investigating they can help you figure it out sometimes in unexpected ways you may have a, a uh, the guard captain that asks you to take care of some bandits or something and doing so helps to improve his relationship so eventually you can question him about the night of the murder but you may also find some other clues while you're out there for instance once i was just doing a quest for the trader, the merchant, to um, just go to an sort of abandoned ruin and clear it out for some trinkets to sell to her to make some more money. And I had heard one other NPC mention that there was a, a potential sort of rendezvous from the Dead Magister in a ruin at some point, and I kind of wondered if it was the same one. And it turns out, in fact, it was, because this side quest actually led me to a journal that gave me some very, very good clues as to who actually did it and why. So even though it was a side quest, it led me to some really good motive-based findings that helped me actually solve the case a couple of days later. And that's really neat because the whole world is very much integrated. Uh, you may do something that you think is sort of to the side, but it never feels that you're getting lost on your journey. It never feels that you're just doing something for no reason because everything you're doing, every person you're talking to, every cultist dinner you're clearing out, every day spent in a dungeon killing monsters, it all works towards something. It doesn't feel that you're just foregoing your magisterly duties and like basically pulling an Elder Scrolls where you know you should be somewhere else doing something important, but there's loot over there, so let's go there first. It never really feels like that because pretty much everything you're doing is building towards something, solving something, getting a clue, getting a relationship, something that helps you in your overall goal to solve this murder. Now, these specializations and skills are all quite powerful, and skill points in this game are very valuable. You do not get them when you level up, which is traditional for an RPG, but you actually have to get them in other ways, and you won't be getting very many of them, so with the power of the skills and the fact that you won't be able to choose too many, that means you do have to sort of plan ahead what kind of character you want to make, and uh, it also helps the replay value because you won't be able to do everything in one playthrough, which is, is not possible. And uh, you'll probably be getting about four or five on average of these skill points, so you really have to be careful about what you choose. They're all useful and they can all be used both in combat to improve your odds against harder enemies and in a sort of an investigative sense that may help you uh, examine a clue more closely because you have alchemy skill or herbology or something like that. You know, they're useful in multiple ways, which I like. It never feels like you're getting a skill just for combat or just for investigation. They tend to have multiple uses that apply in a more reasonable way to help you out. You also do have experience, as I mentioned. You get experience for examining people, for discovering clues, for questioning people's motives, for all sorts of things. And uh, once you get enough experience, you will level up, and you will be able to choose from one of three perks when you level up, or forego a perk and get some extra max HP and uh, three experience towards your next level from the start if you don't want to choose one. And these perks tend to be extremely powerful as well. So this is another uh, example where you won't be getting a lot of levels in the game, but each one will be pretty significant because of the things that you can get. And what's really cool about these perks is oftentimes they are improvements on the skills that you have decided to purchase to make them even more powerful. So for instance, one of the skills that I chose the first time was a magic skill that let me uh, play a card in combat to choose one of the four classical elements and it will do something for me, you know, throw a fireball, earth bend at someone, uh, shield myself with a water barrier or teleport with air. And one of the level up perks you can uh, sometimes get if you have that skill purchased is to make it to where you no longer have to choose between the four and they all appear in your deck if you use that card. And say the pickpocketing one, there's one that allows you to um, pickpocket people once a day as well as uh, use a pickpocketing skill in combat that does some damage and gets one crown, one gold crown, if the enemy is a human. Or you can also get a perk if you level up for it that allows you to also use it on non-human enemies to get one trinket, which can be sold for money and 
to improve your relationship with the uh, trader. So all of these upgrades and skills and everything are all very, very valuable, and they will all very much determine the kind of character that you're playing, which I like. You know, like I said, it's a very tabletop game-esque mechanic to have these skills be very exclusive. You can't choose very many of them, but all of them very build-defining and very potent, allowing you to do multiple different things depending on which one you choose. So each run, you're going to want to sort of build yourself in a different way to see what happens. And oftentimes, another thing that I really like about this is you'll find that most of your problems have multiple solutions. Uh, generally speaking, if you come across something, you can solve it in multiple different ways. If you come across a locked chest, you could have deduced where the key is, you could pickpocket it, you could spend some HP to bash it open, depending on what kind of character you're playing and what you've done so far. You know, if you come across a group of thugs, you may be able to intimidate them into backing down, you may be able to just fight them and kill them all. You may want to use Tactical Diplomacy, which is a mini game that allows you to... it's basically your speech check. It uh, involves having a deck of cards that generate this stuff called empathy, and you can use the empathy to spend on other cards that use it, or to buy cards at a shop at the top of the screen that refreshes every turn. You'll have 12 turns and a rage level of the target that you're trying to calm down, and you have to reduce that rage level down to zero. It can start anywhere from one to six. And uh, yeah, you'll be just using these cards to generate empathy, to buy better cards, to generate more empathy, to get cards that help you to reduce the rage level by spending empathy, basically. And if you're able to do it, you can pass basically a speech check and actually have that encounter go a different way than just brute force or combat would have done. You can even use it to help people remember things they've forgotten and stuff. It actually gets really difficult. It's one of the hardest, uh, like, speech minigames I think I've done in a game, but it is pretty satisfying to get it right. You'll also be able to find a surprising amount of, like, one-off artifacts and boosts and stuff that can help you in different ways. For instance, if you befriend the doctor a whole bunch. You may be able to get him to brew you something to help you. Uh, maybe, say, a tea that helps you immediately pass a couple of those tactical diplomacy speech checks so you don't have to do the minigame and you can just get right to it, which is useful, especially if they're ones that you wouldn't normally have been able to pass otherwise. And some other things of that nature, and really, if I had one tip, because of course the game does generate itself new every time, one thing that is useful pretty much every time, befriend the innkeeper. Always, because uh, having a room to sleep in is nice because you can sleep for free, but it uh, clogs your combat inventory with fatigue cards, which you should avoid, hopefully. So you can uh, buy a room at the end to sleep in, you don't have to have that problem. And if you have the innkeep at max relationship, it's half the price for a room, which is very useful because that cost adds up over time and you won't be getting tons and tons of crowns to spend, so you have to spend them quite tactically, so that's nice. And also, he uh, every morning, if he's at max relationship, he gives you a rumor, and this rumor can be anything from taking care of a town drunk, which can give you some free experience, to someone who actually has some really useful information on the case that could really help you out and help you find some new motive for someone or something. So always useful, befriend the innkeeper every time. The game is also not afraid to give you companions that are extremely useful and potent. Uh, in a lot of RPGs, you'll tend to find that companions are only useful in combat, and whatever other skills they have aren't really used. Like, maybe they're like a super great alchemist, but whenever you're making something with an alchemy skill, only yours counts and theirs doesn't because they can't help you. But uh, this game is not afraid to do that, and your companions, if you're able to call on them, are extremely useful. Yes, they're good in combat, but also you can give them uh, pretty much every clue that you have, and they'll tell you something about it if they know. You know, maybe you have like a sagely scholar that knows all sorts of things that can help you identify what various clues are, or a poison expert that can help you determine if a poison could have, for instance, been used to make someone really weak, so even a weaker person could kill them, which could give the motive to someone that doesn't necessarily have to be a big burly character, all that sort of stuff. Your companions are extremely useful to have with you, because they have dialogue for pretty much every clue and situation that you can think of, so their input is extremely valued, and it is an absolutely great idea to have them with you when you can, and can afford to pay them the two crown a uh, fee every day to have them with you because yeah the game is not afraid to make very useful companions that can do things that you can't and that you can actually just show stuff and you can question them about pretty much everything that you've encountered so far and they'll be able to help you which is super cool because not enough rpgs i feel actually give you the ability to just ask your companions about stuff in the world and see what they think but uh, as an overall conclusion, I think The Magister is a very promising title that's doing some things that have been done before, you know, like your investigative RPG, your uh, deck building combat, that sort of stuff, but wraps it up in a package that I've never really seen and is doing a lot of things very differently. This whole idea of procedurally generating a murder mystery for you to solve is really cool because it's actually done pretty well. The various character motivations and exactly what they may or may not have been doing as you question them and all that, it unravels in a very interesting way. and the characters have character and they have personalities and the motives are things that actually make sense and that you have to figure out yourself and there's a lot of deduction, a lot of the game just 
giving you the information and sort of expecting you to figure it out. It doesn't really point you in any specific direction with a quest arrow that says go here and talk to this person. You just sort of read and figure it out yourself, which is really enjoyable when it comes to actually unraveling a murder mystery like this. And if you would like to take part in the Magister Beta, you actually can do so. Uh, starting at the time of filming this tomorrow, August 13th, which is a Thursday, question mark, yeah, Thursday, you can actually uh, apply for the beta yourself and try it. So I'm going to link you down in the description below this video to the Steam page and to the page where you can sign up for the beta if you would like to check it out yourself. I would highly recommend at least trying the beta because this is something that's very different, that doesn't come along very often and is being done really well. So thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you next time.